nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So, this, the title of this segment is Open 1D Systems Formation of Band Structure, and we'll pick up from the uh, previous uh, presentation where we've seen that if you have two barriers, you have one resonance. If you have three barriers, you have two resonances that are split into a bonding and antibonding state. And if you have n barriers, you have n minus 1 resonances. And if you start to plot them for 10 barriers, 20 barriers, <coughs> or 30 barriers, you can see if you just plot the energy versus the number of resonances that occur, you see bands um, evolving or developing. So now the question is, how can you relate that to some other theories? So as the number of barriers are increased, more and more energy resonances begin to appear and these bands are formed. So in a sense what we have done is we've begun sort of the quest towards an infinite super lattice, right? We've added more and more and after a while it seemed like the shape of the band doesn't change anymore, right? You add more points but you just fill out the same space. So most of you have seen also an infinitely periodic structure, right? Where you not considered a finite structure but an infinitely periodic structure and that is the so-called chronic penny model that you can solve analytically as well. And what you do is you uh, assume a periodic potential where you actually take a single unit cell and you solve the Schrodinger equation for this periodic potential and you invoke uh, Bloch's theorem uh, where you have a wave function that is in a periodic potential satisfies a periodic condition that there is an e to the i k a that is used to phase translate from x to x plus a. So basically as you propagate one way to the next it just gets phase delayed by a exponential where a is the potential uh, wave vector and uh, you can uh, uh, compute these dispersions. So what if you do that, number one, let me just mention there is a tool on the NanoHub, it's called Chronic Penny Model or uh, Periodic Potential Lab actually is the exact name. So you can enter the same parameters that we just looked at uh, before where uh, we looked at the gallium arsenide type structure with six nanometer wells and two nanometer barriers and a 0.4 electron volt barrier height. And you can compute the periodic potential lab uh, case, which is now plotted here in, in dots. And if you put in this uh, calculation we just did in tight binding or in a transfer matrix mat uh, approach of 30 barriers, you basically see how they pretty much overlap. Right? So these theories of a chronic penny model of an infinitely periodic structure and a finite super lattice, they basically agree with each other. There are some numerical differences, but in principle the result is the same. If you take uh, another case where you just increase it to 80 barriers from 30, all you do is you literally just fill in more K points in your discrete space. If you make the dispersion different like an indium arsenide structure where the mass of the material is lighter and you start with 30 barriers like this. Uh, you have less points at first <clears throat> but basically the dispersion is the same. Same features that the bottom band has a, light, a slightly heavier mass than the upper band but basically overlap. And if you do that with 80 barriers again you just fill it in. So. The key summary here is that a finite super lattice with a large number of repeated cells approaches that of a periodic potential model. That means, taken from a different perspective, we can, um, we can design in a finite set of barriers, we can design things that approach bulk-like behavior. But we have control over what the states are and what the dispersions are. Okay. 
Are there any questions on that? Do you guys make sense? No questions? Good.